Welcome back to Bowman's Woods. This is going to be part two of our series showcasing our solar-powered off-grid house build. So, just to get you caught up, we bought 155 acres of forest land with the anticipation of going completely off-grid. We're going to be completely solar-powered, heated by an outdoor wood boiler by the woods that we bought. And instead of it being a typical stick frame build, it's ICF, which is insulated cement forms. So what it means is there's foam around the outside and then they pour cement down the inside. It gives better R value, better soundproofing. There are a lot of benefits to this type of build. And as you can see from the colored leaves and some trees with no leaves, fall is definitely here. I'm living in that trailer off to the right you can see and it's getting pretty chilly at night. So I'm really hoping we can get this enclosed and heated before full-blown winter happens here in Canada. And in the previous episodes, we gave you a little bit of backstory about how we had to clear a lot of this scrub brush at the front of our property in order to make a build site and how I tried to do it with my own tractor but ended up paying a guy with a much sturdier skid steer and a mulcher. That was definitely the way to go. We talked about how our, all of our electrical needs were going to be handled by an end phase solar system, quite large, with the ability to expand if I need even more power in the future. Then for heating, we talked about how the house was going to be heated by an outdoor wood boiler, which would require us to split a lot of wood quickly. So we got, went out and got ourselves a commercial splitter and a conveyor so we could pile all our wood in, in a, what I call a wood corral. So you can go back and get more detail on that. We'll probably talk about more of that in the future. And then we went through the various levels of cement pouring we've had to do. First, we scraped the topsoil off right down to the bedrock, which is only about a foot and a half below the topsoil. So not a lot of uh, earth needed to be moved. Then we poured the foundations or the footings on top of that. Then they started putting the ICF, just really a short retaining wall that they poured cement into just to hold in what's coming next, which is the stone slinger, which fired gravel into the inner part so that they could get it nice and level before they uh, put the cement floor on. But of course, before the cement floor, we need to put the PEX tubing on the foam so that we have that radiant floor heating, which comes from the outdoor wood boiler. Once all the PEX tubing is done in the garage and the main floor of the house, the next step is they seal it and pressurize it with air to make sure there's absolutely no leaks. This is an important step because the very next stage is to cover all of this in cement. So if you find out later there's a leak, it's going to be a pain in the butt to find it. So they did this in stages. So the first thing they did was pour smooth and on buff and all the other stuff they do with the cement in the barn dominium garage. And then the next day they did the house. So it's done in two stages. Because you want the cement to dry evenly, they left these ICF walls really, really, really short. They didn't want any shadows on the cement to create areas where some areas are drying faster than others. So there you go. Once this was done though, the guys were excited to get going on making the ICF walls as tall as they possibly could because, uh, you know, winter's coming. We got to move along here. And that's where this new episode takes over with new information. As you can see, they built the ICF walls up on the garage to pretty much its full height of 15 feet. Then you see the main floor of the house, which is just the first floor, is set to nine feet. So when the cement trucks come, they're gonna pour the entire 15 foot height in the garage and the nine foot of the main floor in one continuous pour. Now we'll get into more detail on how that works in a second. But the one thing Kevin, my builder, was concerned about is he's never poured a 15 foot high wall before. So the cement guys said there's no problem with doing that. You just got to put a lot of those board braces you see inside the garage there to make sure that the wall stays completely perpendicular and uh, level in that direction and no sagging or bending or leaning when they start to pour. So that's why you see all of these really tall braces. So let's get on with the day of the pour. All right. It was like a day or maybe two at the most before the big pour, all the way down 15 feet and they're dropping in the rebar into the walls. So there we go. That's where we're at. It's going to be a big pour. Tall wall. Good morning. Welcome back to Bowman's Woods. Today is another big day on the build process. As you can see, we have the big over here, the big cement tube truck being fed by a cement truck they've already started what they're going to do is they're going to go around the whole house and i'll show you with the drone shots the whole house is quite tall and they're going to do about a third of the wall and then continue around let the first third dry add another third and then a final third because that wall over there for the garage is about 15 feet tall way over there where they're pouring so i'll get the drone up now so you can see it it is a brisk day i asked i said how does cement 
dry in a cold day like this. They said it just dries slower, so it should be fine. Okay, so you can see the guy in the yellow coat there. He's got a, a vibrator. So he goes down in and vibrates it to make sure it sinks all the way to the bottom. Also saw um, Kevin and Scott. They've got the little sawzalls that are vibrating the lower part of the wall. And you're gonna see Kevin taps on the wall every once in a while to make it to make it sure it doesn't sound hollow in any spots. You can kind of tell then how far up the uh, wall they're going. Like I said, the plan is to go around the entire house and do one third of it. Oh, and you also see uh, Rylan up there with the long rebar kind of shoving it up and down, making sure there aren't any voids. So they're, they're doing what they can with the vibrator and that rebar to make sure there aren't any bubbles or voids. This is pretty far down the wall. Uh -huh. But yeah, they'll, they'll go around and do one third of the wall. And then they'll go and do a second round to do two thirds of the wall, and then they do the last round to throw the wall right to the top. So that is how they're doing it. Well, as you can see, this is a multi person operation. So the guy down in the garage floor with the orange vest on, he's actually running the crane and he turns on and off the supply of cement. The two other guys behind him are monitoring to make sure they don't see any gaps or voids or anything. There's people around the bottom that are there in case some cement slops over the side. They can scrape it up before it dries and turns into a, you know, a crusty mess on the already uh, flat floors. And then there's other guys following behind that you'll see when the drone pans the other way. They're using vibrators to uh, make sure that the wall, the cement settles to the bottom of the wall. I was always wondering how do they dump the cement from way up there and it's going to go below the windowsill. So Kevin explained it to me. If you look at the uh, windowsill box frame, it's two by, I guess, eights or tens? I don't know what those, big boards. And at the bottom, they made them out of three two by fours, so I guess these might be two by twelves then. Um, and then they can remove the middle one to see the cement coming up. And when they see the cement at the top, they know it's full. Because I was worried about that. I'm like, you're pulling, pouring from way up there over top of a window box. How do we know there's actually cement below it? So yeah, that's the way, in case you're wondering. I, I wouldn't have known if I didn't ask Kevin. So you can see the base of the cement, of the window has cement coming up through it. And you can also see a little bit of the drips coming through the seams. So yeah, that made me feel, rest a little assured that all these window boxes aren't gonna have massive cement voids underneath them. Because the vibrators they have are big long tubes on a DeWalt or a Makita that they stick in from the top and dangle down. But the longest one they have is eight feet long. This is a 15 foot wall. So they've been banging and using the vibrators to the best of their ability to make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And then they tap the walls to see that there's no voids. And uh, once they get a little bit higher, those vibrators will definitely be in the actual cement and uh, it'll do the proper job. So. There we go. They're just about to start the, the pour of the actual house. We've done one round of the garage, the barn dominium as we would call it, because it's much bigger than a garage. Um, once that is curing, while that's curing, they'll go do the house, do one third of the house, uh, and then they'll come back and do the next third of this, and then the final third of the garage. The garage is much taller than the first floor of the house. You can see the garage is lower than the house too. So you're starting higher and then they only do one floor of the house because they have to hang the uh, the second floor joists, the floor joists on top of this. And um, then they'll put the ICF for the next floor. Floor number two. Oh, I got rid of a pile of dirt that was on the side of the driveway. It used to be like this and that really helped out. We actually got rid of it because the roof joists need to be put somewhere and they're like 60 feet long so they needed a spot where they could back them in and place them so I made a quasi driveway that goes to this flat area here but now I just noticed now the cement trucks can be uh, doubled up so as one is empty he pulls away and the next one starts and then when by the time he's empty the first dump truck could, or a cement truck could be back again so before it used to be one truck and then it was empty they pull away and everybody would have to stop working while they wait for the next truck to uh, back its way in. So this is much more efficient now. So you can see now they're starting on the house. And in case you hear any weird background noises, remember I'm making this video from the trailer right beside the construction site. So every once in a while, they'll, they'll make some loud noises. So in case you're wondering, where the heck is he recording this? Yep, I am literally right beside this construction site. 
So they're doing the house now and the individual walls are some in interior walls that are also ICF. And as you can see, it's a lot easier here. It's only a nine foot high wall. So for those Makita or DeWalt vibrator tubes, I'd call them, that they hang dangle down to uh, move the cement around, it's not a big deal on the house because it's if it's an eight foot vibrator and it's a nine foot wall, it's gonna it's gonna do the job. The only hard wall was the 15 foot high garage or barn dominium wall. This is just a zoom out to show you kind of the size and perspective. The square footage on the main floor is much bigger <laughs> for the barn dominium than the house, but the house will have a second story put on it. And this drone shot is just a good shot of that window sill I was talking about, where the bottom of the sill is actually three, I'm guessing two by threes, and they take the center one out or don't put the center one in, and then they pour from the top. The cement will come up towards that opening, but I think then you'll see it later, they do take that tube and just fill in the bottom of the window sill just to make sure that it's good and packed in there. But that's how they make sure there aren't any voids. It's really only the window sills that would have that problem. The rest of the wall is just a straight drop down so they can easily see if it's filling up properly or not. They just can't see below the window sills. This is just a beautiful fall colors, bird's eye perspective of the build site. You can also see my splitter and my conveyor for the wood, my wood corral I talked about earlier over there. I'm, as I find time, I go into the forest, find usually dead ash trees that are already dead because then they're half dry. And I throw them through the splitter and pile them up in my wood corral. Keeps it off the ground so that it's dry and ready to burn this winter. And as you can see, there's Tyler, I believe, holding the yellow DeWalt vibrator. Now that's a short tube. It's only about four feet long. There's a longer one that's eight feet. The fact that he's using that one means we're pretty close to the top with the cement. And uh, you'll know it's done at the top because I'll show you drone footage when the garage is done, they actually smooth it off because there's no future floor coming. They're just going to be putting a wood plate on top of that that the, uh, the roof trusses will go on. The house will never look smooth at this point because they still have to put the second floor on and they leave it uh, uneven so that the next port can grab onto it. They don't want it to be smooth yet. Now you can see them putting on the final touches of the rooftop. They smooth it out smooth because, like I said, there will be a wood plate that's placed on there that will be where the roof trusses is attached to. And at this point, they're just finishing the last little bit of the cement of the uh, garage itself. The house itself, I think, is done at this point. Uh, the inside wall there you see is smooth because that is going to have a floor joist lie on top of it. But the outer walls, there's still going to be a second floor. And so they, they don't smooth that out because more cement is coming once they get the new ICF up. Okay, it went from a whirlwind of noise and workers, everybody doing stuff simultaneously. And as soon as the walls were filled, smoothed off at the top, <laughs> everybody's gone. It's like midway through the day. So they gotta wait for all this to dry. And then they'll take off those uh, scabs, they call them, all these wooden boards they have on the inside and more so even on the outside. It's just there to keep the cement from uh, bursting with all the weight of the wet cement. So there you go. And then tomorrow, the plan is to get these uh, floor joists up on the, on the main floor, on the main house. Okay, my roof trusses just showed up right after all those guys took off. <laughs> the roof truss guy said, I thought he said to deliver them in the afternoon. I'm like, well, they're not here. So just you and me, we'll figure out where these go. I did, with my excavator, clear out an area over here, so he's going to just do a big U, drop it in the dirt inside the house, and then pull, then pull out. It's a long trailer. It's almost like the same sort of rolling system that they got my uh, seat can off with, although <laughs> Not quite this long, but general same idea, rollers. And they, they tilt it up and it rolls off. Yeah, just like the sea can delivery. The hydraulic ramp with rollers on it. 60 foot trusses, he said those are pretty long. A lot of a lot of houses don't have 60 foot trusses, so this is a, he had to extend the trailer. It's actually hydraulically lengthenable. So uh, he said he had to shorten it to get around the corner to get in my driveway. Oh, there it goes. And 
she's off. Alright, putting up some floor joists. Okay, we have some, some floor joists in the main house. And then what we saw them hanging earlier was the side, I guess, hangers, the joists for the side hangers. So there you go. Progress towards floor number two. Okay, earlier the guys were working on the uh, floor joists. I figured I'd make myself busy, go out, make some firewood. Gonna do some splitting after this. Got more in the forest to go collect. Let's go see how the uh, floor joists ended up being. Okay, we have progress on the floor. So this is the uh, second floor above what will be our master bedroom. And I think they spent a lot of time today putting the uh, side hangers on. See them there, you can see them over there. And actually you can see one above my head. So I'm, I was told that by the end of tomorrow, all the floor joists should be in. So that's uh, that's good progress. I'm happy. Okay, this is the next day and they were right. They said the floor would be done today. The funny thing is, I'm like, what? wait, where's the rest of my floor? Uh, what? I don't get it. Floor here, floor over here, floor over here, and then big space. And then I remembered, oh shit, <laughs> I forgot my own, my own build. This is a uh, great room open to the second floor. So there'll be a banister up here on the second floor that you can actually look down into the great room. I just completely spaced on me. And then this little opening here is for the staircase. So yeah, so they're done. Yesterday when I was here, they said, yeah, we'll be done tomorrow. And I was thinking, really? <laughs> it doesn't look like that much of the roof or the floor was done. It looked like there was a lot more to do, but no, no, we are done. Now they're working on stuff on the second floor. So this would be the master bedroom with double French doors. This is the ensuite bathroom with a window that looks out. Although that looks like a window, that's the duct work to go from the uh, utility room where the furnace is into the house. And then it'll swing out of here and turn and go to the corner and then turn and go down the middle of the house. And that way we'll lose a little bit of headspace here in the uh, walk-in closet slash um, laundry room. And that got, has to kind of go down the middle of the of the house to get you know the most efficient airflow to uh, the rooms of the second floor. There you go. Put all the plywood up on the second floor so they can start working on there. And then once they do that, they start building up the next level of ICF on the main house. The garage is as high as it's going to get, which is good. So they don't need to do anything else in there. I guess at some point they'll take all those braces down, but no rush for that. So things are definitely moving. So the boys are putting the plywood on the floor joists in order to start that second floor to ICF build and the eventual cement pouring and then the roof trusses and then on and on and on. It's, it's constantly in flux and moving. Every day I live here and I see what they accomplish in a day and I'm quite impressed. So if you've been finding this series on an off-grid build of an ICF house informative, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already to follow along. I'm looking forward to seeing the roof on, the windows and doors on, and then that solar install so that we have the power needed to run the wood boiler pumps to keep the floors heated and just see it all come together. So if you're looking forward to that, you should definitely subscribe. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you happiness and health. Ciao for now.